The following installation procedures are suggested guidelines for the installation of a thermon electric heat tracing system. Heat tracing cables may be installed in ordinary non-classified and hazardous classified locations depending on the specific cable options and approvals. Termination kits to fabricate a heat tracing circuit are not addressed in these installation procedures. Refer to installation procedures included with cable termination kits, or contact Thermon for specific instructions to fabricate heating cable. Individuals installing these products are responsible for complying with all applicable safety and health guidelines. Proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, should be utilized during installation. Contact Thermon if you have any additional questions. Upon receiving heating cable, check to make sure the proper type and output have been received. All flexible cables have the catalog number, voltage rating, and watt output printed on the jacket. Visually inspect cable for any damage incurred during shipment. The heating cable should be tested to ensure electrical integrity with at least a 500 volt DC maker. However, IEEE 515 and IEC 60079-30 recommend that the test voltage for polymer insulated heating cables be 2500 volt DC. Connect the positive lead of the maker to the cable bus wires and the negative lead to the metallic braid. The minimum resistance should be 20 megohms. Record test results on record 1 of cable testing report in Thermon installation procedures, form PN 50207. Before installing heating cable, be sure all piping and equipment to be traced is completely installed and pressure tested. Surface area where heat tracing is to be installed must be reasonably clean. Remove dirt, rust and scale with a wire brush, and oil and grease films with a suitable solvent. Locate the cable on the lower quadrant of the pipe at the 4 or 8 o'clock positions. If accessibility is a problem, the cable may be installed at the 10 or 2 o'clock positions. Temperature sensor should be located at least 90 degrees from all heating cables. Begin temporary installation at the proposed power supply location. Lay out the heating circuit on the pipe, allowing extra cable for the power connection and any splice connections. Do not exceed the heating cable minimum bend radius of 10 mm or 3 8 of an inch. Make heating cable allowances for valves, flanges, elbows and supports. Refer to applicable project drawings. Thermon Compute Trace Design Software. Or, for typical allowances for equipment with a flange rating of 150 pounds or less, Table 1 in Thermon Installation Procedures, Form PN 50207. Begin final heating cable attachment by securing the end of circuit termination kit and working back toward the power supply. Flexible heating cable is to be installed using circumferential bands of thermon supplied attachment tape, installed at 30 cm or 12 inch intervals, to keep the cable in proper contact with the pipe. In addition to the circumferential tape requirements, continuous covering of aluminum foil tape may be required when spray or foam thermal insulation is applied, or when heat tracing non-metallic piping. Installation of heating cable on elbows, supports, and flanges. Elbows Locate the cable on the outside radius of an elbow to provide sufficient heat to compensate for the added piping material. Secure the cable to the pipe on each side of the elbow with attachment tape. Pipe supports. Insulated pipe supports require no additional heating cable. For uninsulated supports, allow two times the length of the pipe support plus an additional 40 centimeters or 15 inches of heating cable.
or as specified on project drawings. Flanges allow cable to be looped around pipe on each side of and adjacent to each flange. Heating cable must maintain contact with flange when bending around pipe flanges to compensate for additional heat loss. Do not exceed heating cable minimum bend radius of 10 mm or 3 8 of an inch at temperatures down to negative 15 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees Fahrenheit, or 32 mm or 1 and 1 quarter inch at temperatures down to negative 60 degrees Celsius or negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Installation on valves and pumps Install heating cable on valves and pumps utilizing a looping technique. This allows the valve or pump to be removed if required. Crossing constant watt heating cable over itself should be avoided. Do not exceed heating cable minimum bend radius of 10 mm or 3 8 of an inch. The valve allowance is the total amount of additional cable to be installed on the valve. If multiple tracers are used, the total allowance may be divided among the individual tracers. The total valve allowance may be alternated among tracers for multiple valves in the heat tray circuit. For estimated cable requirements on typical valves and pumps refer to Applicable project drawings Thermon Kapu Trace Design Software Or for typical allowances for equipment with a flange rating of 150 pounds or less, Table 1 in Thermon Installation Procedures Form PN50207 Complete splice connections, if required, in accordance with the installation procedures provided with this splice kit. Before making power connections, the heating cable should be tested to ensure electrical integrity with at least a 500 volt DC megger. However, IEEE 515 and IEC 60079-30 recommend that the test voltage for polymer insulated heating cables be 2500 volt DC. Connect the positive lead of the mega to the cable bus wires and the negative lead to the metallic braid. The minimum resistance should be 20 megohms. Record test results on record 2 of cable testing report in Thermon installation procedures, form PN50207. Install power kit connection in accordance with the detailed installation procedures provided with the power connection kit. Termination kits to fabricate a heat tracing circuit are not addressed in these installation procedures. Refer to installation procedures included with cable termination kits, or contact Thermon for specific instructions to fabricate heating cable. Thermal insulation The need for properly installed and well-maintained thermal insulation cannot be overemphasized. Without insulation, heat losses are generally too high to be offset by a conventional heat tracing system. In addition to piping and inline equipment such as pumps and valves, all heat sinks must be insulated. This includes pipe supports, hangers, flanges, and in most cases, valve bonnets. Verify heat loss consideration when using insulation blankets. Regardless of the type or thickness of insulation used, a protective barrier should be installed. This protects the insulation from moisture intrusion, physical damage, and helps ensure the proper performance of the heat tracing system. Seal around all penetrations through the thermal insulation. After installing thermal insulation and weather barrier, but before energizing the heating circuit, the mega test should be repeated. This should call attention to any damage to the heating cable that may have occurred while installing the insulation. Record test results on record 3 of cable testing report in Thermon installation procedures, form PN50207. Apply caution labels to insulation weather barrier at 305 cm or 10 foot intervals. Final inspection and documentation. It is recommended that the circuit be temporarily energized so that the voltage, amps, pipe temperature and ambient temperature can be recorded. 
This information may be of value for future reference and should be maintained for the historical operating data log. Record test results on record 4 of cable testing report in Thurman installation procedures, form PN 50207. Note. To ensure the heating cable warranty is maintained through installation, the testing outline on the Thurman cable testing report must be completed on the installed heating cables. Contact Thurman for additional details. For additional information on this product, visit us on the web at thurman.com.